Thank you for joining us for this episode. Today, we're joined by Dr. Andrew Newkirk, and uh, he's out of the Chicagoland area, and we're going to be speaking uh, about the number one MySite practice in the country. Thank you for joining us on the Myopia Podcast. Optometric Insights Media proudly presents the Myopia Podcast, where we give you the latest myopia research, clinical topics, and industry insights. Make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome myopia content. And now to our host, a massive myopia manager himself, Dr. David Kading. Thank you again for joining us on this episode. Andrew, it is a pleasure to have you. How are you on this beautiful day? Oh, I can't complain, Dave. I really appreciate the opportunity to be here tonight. We've had a lot of my mentors that are on the that have been on the show in the past previous weeks, and uh, yeah, I'm kind of here amongst titans here in this uh, this new world of myopia management that's been that's been given gifted to us. It it is a beautiful world, and uh, I feel the same way. I I am always honored at any time any of you say yes uh, to the invitation to come and teach me about myopia management. This is this is one of my things. I'm, I'm passionate about myopia management. I know you are too. And uh, anytime we get to talk to somebody about it, it's awesome. So, Andrew, you have uh, the largest, as of the time of this recording, and that's not something you set out to do, but the largest MySite practice in the country. Was your practice uh, all soft multifocals? And then you're just like, okay, we're going to launch this new product? Or have you been a myopia management practice forever? So my background with myopia management um, kind of started with uh, the Academy of um, Ortho K and Myopia Control. Um, I went to the Vision by Design meeting a couple times in, uh, in 2012, 2013, started fitting a handful of Ortho K practice uh, patients. And then the Ortho K practice kind of slowly kind of took off from there. But as you know, you know, the, the conversation back then really wasn't about myopia management. It was more like no daytime glasses or contact lenses. Not a lot of people were really, really talking about it back then. Uh, but then obviously a lot of the, the new, uh, new research came out. So we started utilizing uh, more of the atropine. I probably started doing my first atropine patient in 2015, 16. Um, honestly, we didn't use a lot of uh, soft multifocal lenses because again, there wasn't a ton of research out there on this. So it was predominantly an orthokeratology based practice. Uh, you know, it was when the, the FDA approval of my site uh, happened in late 2019, where I was just like, wow, I've been kind of looking at this the whole wrong way. It's like, we need to be talking about actually reducing the axial length of the eye and reducing the ocular disease. And that's when I had my paradigm shift and we decided to kind of shut down. Uh, well, didn't decide to shut down. We had to shut down <laughs> over COVID. And that's where we completely kind of revamped our programs, our protocols, yeah. try to make things as simple as possible. And then, uh, you know, my site was just to me really easy to talk about, especially with that FDA yeah. approval to parents and the soft lens modality and then took off. So, so l- let me get this right. You were a myopia management practice prior to my site's launch. About how many patients did you have, you know, heading into the pandemic, so to speak? Yeah. So heading into the pandemic, we maybe had close to 200 and, and wow. it took many years to get there. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, the, the, fir- the first year of doing ortho, okay, I might have fit two and the next year I might have fit six. And then it just kind of started mm-hmm. to, to compound and compound. And um, now and now how uh, do you have any idea where your practice is for myopia management now yeah, about, so- about what do you have? We just looked at this. Um, I just gave an eyes on 2022 lecture this last weekend. So I just looked at all of our numbers. We're, we're just shy of 350 active kids, not total kids that have gone through, but actual active kids that are in myopia management presently. And then yeah. uh, one thing I'm particularly proud of from day one, after we reopened after COVID to exactly a year later, we fit over, we started over a hundred new myopia management patients. I mean, we we're literally doing, what is that? five, six a week or whatever. And it was, I mean, yeah. it was just on, it was just on fire. Wow. That's, that's incredible. So you were, you were sharing some of those numbers ahead of time. And I just thought that that, that is incredible information to share in, and you don't do that by accident. And you, you've kind of said that you had a paradigm shift, but I want to start off by saying is you had already, you had already convert to be a myopia manager in your practice. And I think some of us think, oh, you know, I'm going to continue to grow a little bit every year and that's what I want to do. Um, but to say I'm going to nearly double, not not quite, but nearly double the number of myopia management patients in my practice in a one or a two year span since 2019, 
That is, uh, that's incredible, my man. And so there's, there was a time where you went through this paradigm shift. What, what was the stimulus for that, for that shift that started happening for you? So, I mean, I've always kind of had a long-term outlook on optometry and specifically private practice. Um, and, you know, we have a lot of challenges that are facing us as a profession, um, online sales, big box, online eye exams, whatever. Um, you know, myopia management, I saw as a way uh, that there's no way, you know, the internet or big box is going to take this away from us anytime soon. So I initially saw kind of orthokeratology as a way to kind of remain relevant and to basically kind of stay in business 30 years down, down the road. And then, you know, I feel like the FDA approval of, of my site was really just kind of a big gift uh, for optometry. It was actually, uh, I was at a, an, an IDOC meeting and Michelle Andrews, who's uh, one of the head uh, professional affairs for Cooper, just gave this great presentation, um, just introducing my site. It hadn't actually been released yet. We couldn't actually fit it yet. This would have been in February of 2020. Um, and she really talked about the why and the, you know, going after the axi axial length and going after improving the quality of these kids' lives long term, not only from a vision standpoint, but obviously from an ocular health standpoint. And that's where I was like, this is what I want to do. Um, also, you know, seeing these ortho K kids back year after year after year and seeing that it works on um, that, you know, having proof, it's like, oh, well, this really does slow down the progression of myopia. I mean, the parents and the, the kids were just so happy and, you know, it became just as rewarding to see those kids on a yearly basis as, you know, let's say fitting a keratoconic in a scleral lens for the first time. And, you know, they, they see five lines better on the VA chart and hug you. So, I mean, I'm getting that same kind of level of satisfaction, but I'm, I'm getting it multiple times a day now. Uh huh. Yeah, that's that's phenomenal. So the paradigm shift happened for you mentally. This is the direction I want to go. I want to do myopia management hardcore. And so then what did you do? Like, what was the action plans? What was the OK, I'm not doing enough. I want to do more. Where do you go from there? Like, how do you, how do you, how did you come out of COVID? Seeing so five said patients a day. Sure. Yeah. So, well, I guess I get, I was doing my math in my head. Um, I guess it was more like we were starting two patients a week, not five patients a week. Uh, but yeah, we're certainly seeing on any given day, multiple myopia management patients at this yeah. stage. But, uh, but um, the first thing I did is I sat down and I looked at our informed consent agreements, you know, the informed consent agreement functions as our kind of protocol um, and explains everything to the patient. And, you know, I just realized it was just way too complex. And so I just tried to make it as simple as possible. Um, I also simplified our pricing structures. I came up with a new program to instead of charging everybody a flat rate for the entire year, breaking it down into flat monthly payments and we worked with our payment processor to create an actual automatic payment platform that's been working very, 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 very well, really has increased our capture rates. Um, and then I also worked on our marketing materials. You know, we as optometrists are usually pretty poor at marketing. So I, uh, I, you know, I went on, we totally revamped our website. Myopia management's one of the main headings that are on there. Uh, we created referral sheets for other practicing ODs around the area. We created our own brochure for myopia management, which basically just mirrors the information that we have on our website. Um, we shot a number of videos, you know, social media posts. Um, and then when, you know, when we actually opened back up, I was just talking about this to everybody, even people that you don't think are relevant to myopia, you know, some a senior citizen asking how is business going or whatever. It's like, well, actually, we've been growing great since COVID. It's benefited us. And this thing called myopia management, which is where we can you know, slow down how fast kids' eyes are changing, has really just exploded and reinvigorated our practice. Yeah, yeah, I like that. So here's what you you said. You uh, remodified your informed consent agreement. You added this monthly payment system and you revamped your marketing system. Uh, mm -hmm. Informed consent, you included in there the pricing structure and so forth. So let's go through each of those individually sure. and, uh, and talk about that. So the informed consent agreement is something that everybody writes up and nobody has an attorney look at, but they think that it's protecting their behind, right? Uh, it's sure. kind of telling the patient, this is the things that you need to do. And, you know, it's this simple way of like, it helps us feel a little comfortable, but it helps like make sure the patients don't do something that we shouldn't think that they do. What does an informed consent document in your mind, and we're calling it informed consent, you know, 
take the legal mumbo jumbo out of that. I, I know you're not giving legal advice to people, so let's put that aside right away. But what does that document do you think need to look like? What are the things that you're saying should be on it? And, and what do most of them have on it that shouldn't be on it? Sure, absolutely. So I don't look as informed consent as a way to protect us so much as it is to kind of explain to um, the patient, the parent, and also our staff members how this whole system is going to work. Um, you can pretty much read through our two and a half page um, in informed consent. And you're going to know the follow up schedule. You're going to know the price. And you're going to know everything else. I actually just pulled it up right here. So I make sure I don't miss anything here. You know, we start with an introduction. We talk about what our intent is. Uh, we briefly discuss alternatives. Uh, if it's an FDA approved modality, we talk about the FDA approval. Um, contraindications, we briefly discuss those, which are very minimal. Um, uh, we do talk about limitations, like what can happen if you know, the prescription kind of goes out of range or sometimes these cases run away. We talk about risks and possible risks and complications. Uh, and then we talk about you know, our obligation to the patient, uh, what it is that we are going to be providing. Uh, and we talk about the patient's obligation to us, basically compliance with whatever that modality happens to be, cleaning the lenses correctly, just dosing drops like they're supposed to, um, a discontinuation uh, clause, uh, a professional fees clause, a vision plans clause, and why vision plans do not cover this. Um, and then the very end is just kind of a voluntary consent statement. So those are kind of our 13 bullet points there that we hit in all, all, all of our informed consents. What did you change? What did you take out? Or did you just make sentences and paragraphs shorter? So the, the informed consent agreement was always a living document. Um, you know, I, I probably wrote it the first time before we, we had our very first ortho K patient. It was probably something that was shared at uh, Vision by Design. Actually, I know it was shared by someone at Vision by Design. And so it's just been changing over the years. Maybe every month to two months, I would make major changes in it and then when COVID happened i was like hey i gotta just really buckle down and figure out exactly what i want to change and one of the biggest things that we changed was just keeping the pricing as simple as possible um yeah. we have two tiers of pricing depending on what modalities of, of of uh myopia management that kids are in if i had to go back and do it all over again dave i would actually make it just one tier to keep it even more simple. It's just, we've had so many kids that were committed at this lower tier. I just didn't really want to jack up the prices on them. Um, but uh, I, I firmly believe that the, the single tier pricing for whatever the modality is, is, is probably just the way to go. Um, oh, if somebody did atropine alone, would you consider that in the same tier? So right now we don't, but I, I kind of regret doing that. And we do, uh, for the record, we do supply the atropine. For our, for our patients, we were able to legally do that in Illinois. Ah, uh, I see, okay. So your, your tiers uh, are, are two, two tiered. And if somebody goes say into atropine, is there, who else would go to the lower tier? So here, here we're talking about my point exactly here. So this, it gets complicated, right? And so I just, you wanna remove all of these, these barriers. So, I mean, I'll explain the way our system works. So if you're in my site, any distance centered multifocal contact lens, VTI, synergize, biofinity multifocal, whatever, um, or your first year of ortho K, that's at the higher tier. And then if um, my site and all distance centered lenses stay at that level going forward, the ortho K, the established ortho K patients are at the tier below, and also all of our atropine patients are at that tier below. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it does get tricky, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. and so I, I think yeah, you know, treat treat. I'm a big fan of Treehouse Eyes and everything they're doing. You know, they yep. do a very a single pricing, single tier system, and uh, which I initially kind of disagreed with when I first heard about it, but now. The, the more I've thought about this and the more experience I've had, I, th I think it's definitely the way to go. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Okay. So great. And um, I, 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 I do see the point and I think a lot of people have those questions, you know, of the cost of goods with products and, you know, uh, soft multifocals being a higher cost of goods than, than something else or it's an ortho K. So how does that work? And you kind of explain that. So you also put in here this monthly payment thing and you, mm -hmm. and, you, and you changed something there. Tell me a little bit about that. So, you know, I think the biggest pushback to starting any child in a myopia management program is always going to be kind of cost. Um, and so uh, 
uh, let's say, I'm just gonna make up a number here. Let's say your fee is a hundred or eighteen hundred dollars uh, per year. And so, you know, let's say, is, let's say two thousand for the uh, for the for the simplicity of it. Sure, I was doing math in my head. So what's two? Oh, do, do eighteen hundred. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, in that in that case, Dave. So let's say it's two thousand dollars a year. Um, uh, one hundred and sixty six dollars and sixty seven cents a month sounds a heck of a lot less expensive to anybody, even educated people, um, than two thousand dollars a year. And those are those are, in fact, the, the same numbers. Um, it also sounds like uh, there's not nearly as big of a commitment. And uh, one thing that we used to have in our informed consent agreements that there was a one year minimum commitment to the program. I've since taken that out because I've, people don't drop out of this program. They keep going indefinitely they keep going because it works and you know that we've had two dropouts in the last few years and one was because a child developed type 1 diabetes you know so the, the you know the reasons that people drop out are very few and far between so I've, I've since kind of removed that from there so if somebody did it for six months you would just charge them this amount and then you would require them to return the lenses or whatever hadn't been used is that how we haven't we haven't cross that bridge yet we haven't had that scenario but if yet. it did that's how you would answer that question yeah and i just say like we'd eat the you know the cost or whatever and mm -hmm. you know and it's so it's few easy. and far between that you can feel kind of like a warranty right you can yeah. you can set that up and so rather than saying myopia management is and i, I get why you do 1800 because it's 150 a month rather than 167 yeah. 67 uh or whatever the numbers are that you would use so you just say that myopia management is one hundred and fifty dollars a month, and yep. uh, that's that's, that's what we do. And you get new lenses uh, every year or every six months, and uh, you know you, you you get to get all that taken care of. That's that's how that how that works. And then you yeah. set up you you said you set up something with uh, your merchant services to be able to do like a recurring charge yep. for the patient. Yep. And so, um, so to, just to back up for just one moment here, another really, really great thing that kind of happened on accident with this automatic payment platform. If you have a child that needs to pivot and switch treatment patterns, you don't have to have that conversation about cost or refunding money or anything like that anymore. So, you know, I, for instance, I've got a, I do have a MySight patient whose astigmatism just has taken off um, out of nowhere. She started as a 0.75. And then now it's a minus three in the course of a year and a half. So we've taken her out of my site. We're putting under Synergize, uh, distance centered multifocals. And it's like, well, you know, I'm going to eat a little bit of extra cost of goods right there. But at the end of the day, we're still going to be profitable on this on this one patient still. Um, and it just makes it really easy for the family. They don't have to worry about these decisions. They let me be the doctor and we don't have to worry about all these changes and fees or anything like that. Um, and then yeah. to, to answer your question about the, uh, the automatic payment program. So we use uh, Chase Merchant Services, Chase Bank. And uh, I just made a phone call to our business banker telling them kind of what we wanted to do. And so they set us up with something they call the Chase Orbital Gateway, uh, which is an online login. You have an online login, just like you do for your bank. And you can just plug in credit card numbers. It's fully customizable. You can put what day of the, what day of the month you want to charge, how much, you know, when to stop payments, if you want to stop payments, you get alerts when cards are expiring. You get a report every month tells you if cards, you know, ran out of money. Which you, this, there is there is some time involved in managing this. You know, we every every month we have somewhere between three to ten cards. You know, usually flex spending cards that ran out of money or whatever. Especially this time of year right now. Um, but uh, uh, but it's it's definitely a net positive and has, has brought that capture rate up over ninety percent. So meaning that if we have a if I've got a patient in the chair. I've determined myopia management is, is right for this patient. I mean, they're going forward with one of these treatments 90% of the time. And, and prior to doing this automatic payment platform, anecdotally, I'd have to say that it was probably closer to 60%. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I like this a lot. This makes a lot of sense. And what, what percentage of your patients uh, have you moved over into that format? of uh of paying on the on the monthly fee as opposed to uh a flat up front well close close to half just under half so we have close to two hundred thousand dollars a year coming in on the auto platform and we have close to half a million coming in from myopia management in general so it's it's moving over we, we just started piloting this the end of december almost exactly a year ago and uh 
And what we found is our established patients that were already in these programs, just to keep it simple, they just, they've been wanting to just still keep paying everything up front, just because that's what they've been used to for the last few years. Uh, but almost all the new patients are enrolling in the flat, flat monthly thing. We're not offering any kind of discount if you pay everything up front or anything like that. Again, that just starts to complicate things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, beings that it's, that it's, uh, a, a, a year, a yearly thing, or a, excuse me, a monthly thing. Um, is it in some sort of agreement with them that you promise to only bill their credit card, uh, for a year, or is there an expiration date of when you stop billing their credit card if they forget to come in? No, we have it kind of going in perpetuity until like they decide to discontinue, discontinue treatment, which, you know, usually it's when people move away or, um, you know, it's when I say that, Hey, the, the axial length looks like it's leveled off. I think it's appropriate to trial going off of this now, which, yeah. you know, or it's okay. Patients, you know, they're, they're so happy. They usually keep doing it until their twenties and they move off to college anyways. Um, yeah. So it'll be interesting like to kind of see how what long, happens. How long have you been doing this, Andrew, this, uh, this monthly fee thing? I, j I just started piloting it exactly a year ago and we really kind of like did a, f a formal launched it on January 1st of this year. Yeah. Well, so I think that's, um, I think that's pretty impressive that, uh, it's going so well and that you've got such a large amount. Well, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to limit the conversation around marketing. And so I would love to bring you back and speak to you about marketing and what you did to uh, to really change that because I know you've got uh, a lot of really good ideas on that. Do you think we could bug you for another time sometime in the next couple of months to come back to the Myopia podcast? I think we could make that happen for sure. <laughs> <laughs> You're the man. Awesome. Well, this is really cool. I love the ideas and I love that you had a paradigm shift that you found out that the simplistic approach was the most effective approach. I mean, that's not any, any wonder that Steve Jobs uh, made Apple a simplistic type of, uh, type of technology that we all appreciate just basically on, uh, on simplicity. And so you're doing the same thing and look at how you're crushing it. Uh, $200,000 on auto pay, a 90% capture rate, uh, $500,000 in myopia management a year. I mean, that's, uh, that's as big as uh, a lot of people's practices. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. 350 kids uh, whose lives are being forever impacted by what yeah. you're doing more importantly. And that's, yeah. uh, that's incredible. So thanks for sharing your uh, incredible insight here, my man. I appreciate it, Dave. Anytime. Yeah. And thank you for joining us for this episode of the Myopia podcast. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you back for future episodes with other incredible individuals like Dr. Newkirk. Thank you. This podcast was brought to you by Optometric Insights Media. If you enjoy our content, please leave a five-star review. And don't forget to subscribe for more great episodes.